with the big chin, big eyes, big mouth. I can't watch cartoons anymore. I'm going outside. Love it or hate it, there are certain tenets of animation discourse that will never go unchecked. The jury is out as to the primary downfall of Saturday morning cartoons. People will always debate to what extent theatrical 2D animation will make a resurgence, if not already. And while it remains lightly contested to this day, I'm sure the race to usurp CN City as the best Cartoon Network era will heat up this decade. With all these discussions in mind, there's one talking point that many don't have any tolerance for. Cal Arts. Or more specifically, the impact of the Cal Arts style. It's a phenomenon almost as old as time itself, and today it remains as by far one of the most contentious topics in all of modern animation fandom. Many have chimed in and delivered their respective takes, but of course, there is never one definitive take that rounds the curve and flattens the debate wholesale. It's a world-weary issue, but one that sees no signs of slowing its descent. And today, I'm here to pile onto the mess. Part of what energized me to talk about this subject would mainly be how binary the discourses always seem to be. It's an extreme term that incites an extreme reaction and thus leads to radical expressions of dissent. Even with there being more accurately defined right side containing the acceptable takes, I was only more aware of how black and white everyone's stances seem to be. It would make for good actual discussion one day if we could lay some other elements out. So I hunkered down and meditated on it for a while and refined this piece over the course of about a year or so. It's mostly the first half that was heavily penned prior, but the main reason why it took so long is because I refused to travel down this road without a good friend of mine to deliver some thoughts of her own. Hello, I am, uh, I go by Sailboat Stoat. I make videos, I talk about media, I talk about culture, and occasionally, when I've been good, when I've done my homework and all my chores and made my bed, I get to do both at the same time. I'm excited to do that today. Um, Cal Arts, what a hodgepodge. Every single time I think the debate is dead, I see it crop up on Twitter, so I'm really glad to finally get the chance to put my thoughts out there and finally get to put my two cents in the, in the ring. So, to that end, we're debasing the Callard situation ourselves in an attempt to bring another dimension to this heavily flat debate. Maybe we'll succeed, maybe not, but at the very least we can bring some new topics to the tables and give y'all something new to think about. But before we really dive in, we have to ask ourselves, what is the Callard style? The origins of CalArt style is a term more or less stemmed from the one and only John Crickfalusi, who introduced the term as an alleged explanation for the phenomenon of younger artists poorly replicating and recontextualizing the art of the old masters in newer works. He cites the design work of the Iron Giant in particular as the textbook quasi-pastiche of older Disney character constructions that didn't quite encapsulate what made the original works as functional as they were appealing. Reason for the famous school being named specifically was due to the school's famous association with Disney. See, back when CalArts was still known as the Schoenard Art Institute, the animation studio widely used the school's services to help train increasing numbers of fresh studio artists. This is probably also where associations with nepotism and the assembly line theory came from. Anyway, some of the most famous creators of the Western industry did go to this prestigious school including none other than Brad Bird, the director of The Iron Giant. In describing the makeshift phenomenon, John Kay was direct, but still pretty vague. 
When cartoonists refer to the cow art style, they are talking about this recycled look that is not influenced by life or even other cartoon styles. It is strictly a straight line of inheritance for a few generations starting from somewhere around the Aristocats, losing important genetic code with each new generation and getting staler and staler. It has been blended with 70s Hanna-Barbera and Alvana and Sheridan College in the last 20 years and even a bit of Spumco. But the basic core of the feeling, soft Disney, is Cal Arts. Sometime after this inaugural post, he actually released an apology to Cal Arts students over the negative associations with the term. The page is down as of now, but it remained up for a long time, latest documented time being around June of 2019. Despite this apparent change of heart, obviously this seed had already began to take root in animation discourse. The fact that this term had taken root squarely at the start of the decade was cosmic irony at its finest, as the industry was once again shifting an outpouring of new blood into television animation produced a diverse and energetic mix of stories that created a raucous new glut of animation fans. If we were only tasked with naming just one from each year of the decade, we would come up with new classics such as Adventure Time, The Amazing World of Gumball, Gravity Falls, Steven Universe, Bojack Horseman, Miraculous Ladybug, The Loud House, OKKO, okay, Let's Be Heroes, Final Space, and Mau Mau Heroes of Pure Heart. Now this is by no means the only group of prominent and important cartoons from this decade. We didn't even touch upon any international works or transcendent reboots. But this small group of works touched many people and changed all their minds, but with any popularity comes a fair share of criticism. The CalArts term had bounced around various websites that host cartoon criticism, but it had yet to make a lasting impact on the wider community until after it had made a steady home on 4chan's Comics and Cartoons board otherwise known as Co. As caustic and hypercritical as users tend to be there, in the midst of all these industry changes, the general user base had difficulty discussing their vastly dissenting viewpoints related to the new boom of animated content. Thus, they'd uncovered a new way to express their displeasure with a new crop of cartoons. Of the works previously mentioned, at least half have become an apparent example of the Cal art style at work. Here, the word became shorthand for a group of design attributes the works seemingly have in common, though an overextension of said meaning was not too uncommon as well. In a visual sense, these can include but aren't limited to the following. Really round or soft features, perfectly circular eyeballs, unique construction, overly geometric body structure, bean mouth, and the lumpy head designs. Colors came to be known as a term used to portray the idea of many modern cartoons being uninspired, lazy, and over-commercialized. The outward traits became prime meme fodder, but the term also came to satirize narrative and pro-social aesthetics of the shows themselves. At times, these softer features came to be a mark of a series' failings in portraying a strong emotional narrative. Over time, the term has gradually picked up traction as the anti-establishment's way of expressing frustrations with the industry and what it produces. This term seems to have really picked up steam around the mid-2010s, with series such as Steamy Universe, Adventure Time, and Gravity Falls being prime targets. From there, the term began to leak into other sites' dialogue, and while it was not part of the prevailing conversations elsewhere for a while, its first home had kept the term in vogue long enough for it to stick. In May of 2018, things came to a head with the release of the now infamous trailer to Warner Brothers' Thundercats Roar Reimagining. Many all over the internet were quick to jump on this trailer for its simplistic character design, comedic focus, and uh, the showrunner's haircut, among other things. Particular emphasis was put upon ongoing comparisons to another Warner Brothers reimagining, Teen Titans Go. This backlash was more widespread than just Co. Twitter also became a major player in ongoing commentary on the upcoming reboot, and reactions to the trailer and the negative response were explosive to say the least. 
Over the next few weeks, Twitter users helped facilitate the swift shutdown of CalArts discourse and drama alike as the term became well known and reviled, especially among animation-centric personalities on YouTube. The CalArts term was pretty much made into the 14th bad word among animation fans as past validity of the term was quickly called into question. Since then, the term hasn't seen too much of an unfettered resurgence, but then again, it doesn't really need to make one. Despite its prolific infamy today, it continues to be shot down in animation discourse as a destructive ad hominem attack and a divisive tool of the disgraced animator. So, using CalArts as a defining term is incomplete and short-sighted. In most instances, I don't necessarily agree with the usage of the term, but I know what people mean when they're saying it. If, for example, sometimes people will say like a game is an RPG or an adventure game and like, I know what you mean, but that term itself isn't informative. Right? Like Deli said in its original use, it talked about animation as a reflection of a specific studio and not as a reflection of the world around an artist. How it's used today is quite different than that and it's marred by ambiguity. I also think some of the other implications of the term can be found within its origin and its originator. So the attitudes surrounding the CalArts term and the impression left on others by its progenitor, John Kay, cannot be understated or forgotten. John Kay, or Michael John Chris Felucci, is a, let me put it lightly, controversial figure within the world of animation. He's best known for creating Ren and Stimpy, and second best known for sexually harassing people. Uh, he's abused and mistreated those working for him, and has allegedly groomed and sexually harassed two minors. Do I even have to say allegedly? Like, he publicly apologized in everything. Although, can we even call that an apology? He spent half the damn thing reminiscing about the good times, and the other half he droned on about how he had depression and ADHD, like, bitch me too. You don't see me trying to date children. Also, literally, in his apology, he says, outside of SpongeBob and its talented team, I'm one of the few producers who's willing to break down creative boundaries, try new things, and allow artists to show off their own unique styles and skills. He holds his talent high by virtue of being different. Yeah, yeah, I get it. It's not a phase. Nobody understands you. You're just some creative 1000 IQ avant-garde genius who's just built different. After this surfaced, it's been interesting watching the narrative of his perfectionism change from that as a mark of his talents to that being a stain on his character and a reflection of how he undervalues the time of those working for him. But due to these personal foibles, if you may call them that, there are those who have used his infamous reputation as a diss to the term and an argument against using it entirely. And while I understand this impulse to do that, I feel it's ultimately pointless. It says nothing about the nature of the term, and frankly, CalArts means something wildly different than the way he used it. Sure, at its core you could distill it to different, good, same, bad, but I think it goes a little deeper than that. To be honest, in the minds of most, I'd imagine very few people associate their use with the term and the nature of its creator. Like, I use the term Lovecraftian, and I engage with Lovecraftian media, but I really don't think too much about how H.P. Lovecraft had a cat named Nick. So, obviously, Ko has played a big part in this term ballooning to be as big as it is. Oftentimes, the board is portrayed as the lowest of the low, the slimiest of the slimy, the trashiest, darkest, most mean-spirited place to discuss cartoons, and that's not entirely incorrect, but entirely is the keyword here. I think there's a fair amount of toxicity to be found in any of the boards, even if they don't reach the pure pandemonium that B or Pole can reach, the only two sections that seem to be really as far gone as the medium claims the whole site to be. 
This can lead to a fair amount of straw manning or hyper exaggeration of what a nod's do and how wild it can get over there. In many ways, I can see Ko as being more open-minded or nuanced than most other platforms where animations discussed, even before Tumblr allegedly ruined them all. There's a specific way that posters can bring attention to underrated classics overseas or explore topics that genuinely affect industry professions or even how they can unmask the mysteries behind the most unexpectedly hyped projects. Note to self, document the Ballad of Rimba Racers one day. But that's just my opinion, bias and all. I mainly say it to introduce a wider position that might be deemed worthy of adoption. I think it's important to remember that while talking about this Goliath that Ko is not a hive mind. It never was and probably will never be. It's an amalgam of virtually anybody and everybody represented in their interests, talking with no consequences and presumably no big footprint. For the most part. The anonymous users that speak there come from all walks of life, and while many of them feed into the noxious tete a of bad attitudes and hot takes, plenty more come to the table relatively well informed, or at least open to discuss these things, whether in a utilitarian sense or from a more personal place. The application of CalArts as an emotional sentiment is a pretty powerful framing device. It establishes the more guileless reasons behind its usage and it can empower a more sympathetic approach to its traction out in the field. A lot of people don't mean to shit on a whole industry's worth of work or come after some of the most respected creators of our time. The word, while having a clear meaning originally, gained a pretty elastic definition as time goes on, and due to the ways it's been weaponized by both sides of the aisle, the well's been sufficiently poisoned at this point. There's no way of even discussing the term itself without stepping on somebody's toes, it's part of why I'm making this video in the first place. To be honest, I don't think there's a way to, like, redeem the usage, nor do I necessarily think there should be a way to do that. So I don't make this case with such motives in mind. But with that said, I think we really need to look at context next time we break out the pitchforks and torches for the next poor unfortunate soul that utters these magic words. There's a lot more to this term than just one guy or one cartoon and we betray that logic every time we clap back so severely. The aim should be to educate around the phrase, not shun anyone even thinking about it. I think for as many that use it loosely and maliciously, there's at least twice as many just trying to put a word to their tastes or understand a larger issue. The next time it's used in such context, there's a real opportunity to make a real discussion out of it. Remember, the farther you push back, the more likely you'll push folks right into the opposite side of the spectrum, which you don't want. If there's anything that Ko's role in this should have taught you, it should be that there's a sucker born every minute. A lot of the board does encompass many countercultural opinions towards the industry, but all the same, this other set are just dumb teenagers or oblivious folks dipping a toe into the online discourse for the first time. Though its reputation as a collective can easily spoil your own opinion of a term or phenom stemming from it, we have to actually do our due diligence in order to do this properly. Look. As much as I don't like more cynical, nasty, or hypercritical philosophies the term highlights, I dislike the trigger-happy, anal-retentive mainstream reaction to any and every application even more. And it took a long time for me to even get to that point. I mentioned earlier that I found the term Cal Arts as a style to be shallow and ultimately unuseful, but it's pretty narrow-minded and without much nuance on its own. I'm not saying that you're wrong for using the term. Far from it. But if your argument begins and ends with just calling it Cal Art, you've missed the bigger picture by a mile. People seem to forget that many changes within animation styles are budgetary, commercial, or technological. There are many elements of thin line animation that do make the process faster, cheaper, while remaining visually pleasing, at least for some people. Animation is an expensive project, but if we want to have this continual cavalcade of new content, corners have to be cut somewhere. That's just it. Not only that, but as animation and television technology has developed, the need for more traditional thick line animation is gone. Now that style is more of an aesthetic choice and less a technological choice, 
people are choosing to go in that style. Some people like it. At the end of the day, the biggest turnoff about all of this is the intensity of the bait. It often finds itself as the sole reason for dismissal in negatively reviewed shows and even trailers. Like, you haven't seen it. Personally, on my end, like for another example, it, as it pertains to modern cartoons, I'm kind of tired of the overly optimistic good boy archetype. Uh, but that's a point to criticize, not a reason to write off a show in its entirety. Just think about that Thundercats Roar trailer. Currently it's sitting at 3.4 thousand likes and 36 thousand dislikes. And the comments reflect this. These, This isn't the response of, eh, not for me. Or, mm, I don't really like it. Maybe this seems a little derivative. No, this is like, this reaction is pure ire. There were threats, personal attacks against the team. Even the producer's hair? Is a man bun that surprising in this day and age? This isn't your everyday online discourse. This is advanced discourse. And by advanced, I mean dangerous. Um, let's talk about school shootings. In the summer of 2018, a Twitter user posted, some of you guys are all right, don't go to Cal Arts tomorrow. The phrase, some of you guys are all right, don't go to school tomorrow, originated from 4chan and is believed to have come from a school shooter. It then circulated as a meme on 4chan. Like, I mean, I get it. When, it, when they were talking about Cal Arts right here, it, it was an edgy joke. But here's the thing. Edgy jokes don't form on their own from the aether. Isn't a tad bit suspicious that most edgy jokes are against minorities that a decent size of our populace actually wants to suppress? Typically, edgy jokes find a pre-existing sentiment and then take it to its darkest extreme. People latched onto the rage that swirled around CalArts, and this was the edgy next step. So, I try to be open and honest from a personal perspective in my work. But I've gotten to talk about a lot of content I enjoy and how they've affected me as a dog person. There's a lot to me that casual viewers would not initially catch on to, which is how it probably should be. If this ever goes somewhere someday and I have an intrepid group of patrons to talk to every month or so, they would likely be blown away by half the shit I casually discuss at any given time. But there's a stark disconnect there, I'm trying to bridge the gap, but Nonetheless, it will exist in some capacity. And the main thing being that I'm way more likely to bitch in private. And that's not a remarkable statement on its own. I mean, everyone's a little different in front of different company, but the way I choose to cover issues in a video, rather than the way I choose to talk about them out of the public eyes, it's like night and day. And so one night, uh, my friends and I were up late talking and somewhere the conversation traveled to something cartoon community related and I hopped on a rant and it was framed around the general dogma of three simple words. Niggas can't read. It was a, a screed prefaced around the lack of awareness animation communities can suffer from and how plenty of people seem downright allergic to looking outside of their comfort zone for content that fits them. I think about it enough because of its natural recurrence, and by natural I mean Ben's are trying to canonize it by shoving it into every other conversation we have, but like the term we're trying to deconstruct today, it really does have a wider application in our spheres of interest. See, animation is such a multifaceted and interesting medium that it can inspire some of the most analytical, introspective, compassionate fans and creatives alike. In turn, it can also actively encourage some of the more nitpicky, overly personal, and hyper-emotional enthusiasts around. Despite its notoriety for being a very time-consuming, emotionally draining, personally demanding, and overall testing subsection of entertainment, its fans can mirror that work effortlessly when they're discussing this art we're supposed to enjoy. The truth is, niggas don't really read because a lot of them don't try to. I mean, nobody pops out of the womb a learned literary scholar, but because we don't really necessitate it, nobody bothered to learn how to do it. 
Hell, I don't even push it as much as I wanted to. It's easier and more personally rewarding for me to spoon feed y'all what I learned in boating school, rather than tell you to pick up the study guides yourselves. And why would you need to as a casual fan of an audiovisual medium? The problem comes in when everyone finds themselves tasked with becoming critics and historians just alongside the fans. I know, <laughs> pot calling the kettle black, but stay with me here. This medium as we know it is just about 200 years old or so, but there's so much history to it that the professional historians we have are only really specialists of one or two eras. The history is developing around us, and generally speaking, people don't stop to appreciate that. So a lot of people find themselves fear-mongering about the downfall of the modern industry due to cal-arching corruption and internal greed, but they don't even know the development process well enough to know that creator styles always get streamlined into more pipeline-friendly approaches. They'll find themselves hunting down creatives relentlessly for making reboots that they didn't even greenlight. They'll find themselves forming a mob to cast out an animator making cannibalism jokes, but don't know the surface level shit that animators have gotten up to just after hours. Seriously, look up that Rugrat Storyboard jam, it's fucking nuts. The issue just doesn't fall on the shoulders of one or two groups. This is standardized mutual ignorance. That doesn't just mean everyone's equally ignorant, but that it's normalized and accepted to the degree where it is practically ubiquitous. Heed my words, watch my chops. You don't have to know everything about your hobbies, but some of the stuff you feel so emboldened to talk about with a sizable lack of knowledge about the other stuff related to it is actually so incorrect, the end result is hurting people. Like, I'd probably be the last person to be crying about emotionally displaced art students, but believe it or not, the hype is actually harmful. It's kind of amazing that the most prolific animation program on the North American continent moonlights as a shitty punchline during Teen Titans Go rants, but it's also kind of not. It's actually quite predictable. The simple fact is that when niggas don't read, we're all a bit more blind for it. Plenty of people only go off the little they can see through their narrow tunnel vision, but they don't stop to analyze the bigger picture. Animation's about maintaining the illusion of life, but that doesn't mean we have to fabricate stuff about it for the medium to make sense. When you look at it chronologically speaking, it's easy to call a bunch of works Ren and Stimpy ripoffs, but that kind of robs each work of their innate creative integrity, no matter how much you think that it's not there. The genesis of Cow and Chicken lies in its creator trying to tell his kid a bedtime story, and from there the characters slowly developed into the icons Cartoon Network got a chance to debut. Guess which show he worked on prior? The angular frenetic style seemed to be just his trademark. Like even if they weren't all that great, can we at least acknowledge them as their own thing that came along at the right place and right time? It's literally carte blanche to shit on executives, I know you guys love to do that. See, anytime you see a new project from a prolific artist graft an established art style onto a new concept a la Central Park or Solar Opposites, it's never the mark of a lazy creator trying to capitalize on old success. Nine times out of ten, it's a creative choice imposed by non-creative people to keep regular people like you watching. These things all happen for different reasons, but the incorrect interpretations always sell an opportunity to learn more about this industry, of which the interpretation is almost always born out of poor assumptions, knee-jerk judgments, or bad faith arguments and full swing. Sometimes all three are involved. The collective reference material this community has access to is so high, and yet we can't seem to escape such simple, logical foibles and discussing shit we're supposed to be passionate about. All because we don't seek the knowledge that we claim to crave. You probably don't think about it as much, but it's had its tangible effect on animation fandom. Alright, when niggas don't read, we get rickety shots at low-hanging fruit. I legitimately believe that the people who made the show do not know how to animate and know literally nothing about art. Like, you could take a rambling hobo off of the side of the street who thinks the computers were sent to us by the devil to commit witchcraft, and he would make something as technically sound as this show. 
When niggas don't read, we get extra crunchy sampling of the nostalgic angst with a hint of surprise imperialism. Oh, that explains the terrible animation. It was made by a Chinese animation company. I mean, no offense to whoever originally animated this, and no offense to Chinese people in general, but... Really? When niggas don't read, we get some of the spiciest sadness disguised as a holy takedown of public enemy number one among caustic cartoon critics. Sugar, you are such a fucking creep! Jesus Christ, Rebecca, are you on fucking Ambi? And when niggas don't read, we get shit like this. There ain't no humans in the art the world, silly. So that's an instant no! Get out of here! Oh shit, my, my bad. I, uh, I meant to put this clip in. Oh, hey guys. So, so what did y'all think? Get your CalArts ass on somewhere. Kill yourself! Go die! Drink bleach. Why are you even still alive? I mean... Oh. The show is shit. Therefore, your shit. I mean, oh. why? I found his address, guys! Let's dox him! Let's dox him! That was pretty good. Isn't it amazing that... These two projects were made by the exact same person. It's a small world, huh? None of these people are really bad to their core, at least I don't think they are. But intentionally or otherwise, they've all by far embraced and doubled down on some of the most illogical and explosive takes imaginable because they make up part of the illiterate populace. They have their own baggage to carry out, but the evidence they cite has helped form their case in the molten hot burning core of their ironclad ignorance and seldom actually illuminated or diffused any ongoing discrepancy. These niggas don't read either, but frankly, I don't know if they want to. A lot of them give the air of having all the knowledge they need while exercising sizable laps of information. That's the flavor, the mindset, the very attitude that trickles down and creates a clusterfuck like the CalArts debate. It's not so much the issue itself, but the general ethos both sides have created. Nobody has time anymore to give another look to analyze anything new or old because we have to yell at the other side. Both sides engaged because they're concerned for the medium, but the ways they've chosen to engage with it has effectively brought this shit to a standstill. It's the kind of standstill that actually prevents us from tackling the root of the issue, challenging those preconceptions and forming new offshoots for wider acceptance. We could be preserving parts of our history that are so unconventional, they are literally going extinct right under our noses. But here we are, arguing about shit that doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. A few niggas don't read and suddenly nobody's picking up a book. You wanna know why we're light years away from clawing out of the children's genre pigeonhole that we've been thrust into? It's because the way we tackle many of these shits is absolutely childish. The path to distinguishing the medium was once again lost the moment animators started trolling as professional childhood ruiners and everybody else refused to walk away and took the fucking bait. It's absolutely maddening that a good chunk of the public fails to see the harm in marginalizing certain sections of animation for being too childish and then they turn around to have these absurd arguments and spit out production theories even Doug Walker would scoff at. I mean, did you do any research? Do you know anything about how the world works? Read a fucking book! When I think of the CalArts debate, I don't think of anything that betters the industry or the fan communities or <laughs> really anything. Both sides have made their points and regardless of how valid they are, bit per bit, they've ostensibly gotten nothing out of it or changed anything by it. It wasn't entirely pointless, I believe it was supposed to have been had. This discussion needed to take place, and most of the video is me bitching at y'all to let others voice arguments in the first place. However, if your beef really comes down to fundamentally changing everything in the scope of these trysts, then this is the most fruitless hill you could ever die on. If half the time we spent on studying house style to look at more ancient animated lost media, we'd have more knowledgeable, open, respectable fans. Treat this medium with the respect it supposedly deserves and stop squabbling over the most minor bullshit. 
I'm not knocking you for having this conversation. Again, we need more conversations to take place, no matter the outcome. There's just no justification to keep this up anymore. We've engaged CalArts, we've had many conversations, we've come to a standstill, but damn it, we have had this exchange of ideas. It is time to move on. The main problem at this point that coldly calcifies this for eons would be the absolute rock solid standstill we now find ourselves at. Whether you're incredibly pro or anti-industry, there is pretty much next to nothing left to say. No one to appeal to, nothing to accomplish under either creed. If you've gotten nothing out of the countless hours fussing over the intricacies of the bean mouth or how hard the industry will very epically pwn and blacklist the haters, take a moment to actually figure out why you stuck it out for so long. You're probably trying to appreciate the medium of work or defend the specific body that's really meaningful to you or discover the next cartoon that gives you that big Antony Go moment all over again. Maybe you're just here for the shit post. I don't know. Literally, whatever you're here for, look around. There's a whole world of content out there. It's all shapes, all sizes, genres, and tones. You might not even have to look too far out of your comfort zone to find it. You just have to do a bit of light reading to get there. Honestly, I get the reluctance to even start looking. I mean, there's, there's so much content out there, but if something harder wasn't worth doing, we probably wouldn't have the cartoons as we know them today. The path to better understanding these works is a long, winding path, but it is a quest well worth taking up. This shit isn't a race, it's a long marathon. But that means you'll always have gains to make so long as you keep going. You'll never know where this journey might take you, but continue to trot along with some motive in your movements, and search definitively for more and you will always come to a rightful conclusion. I feel as though many of the detractors spent time where they stepped away from cartoons, and when they returned older and jaded, they walked away from these shows dissatisfied. I mean, I say this as someone who's never stopped watching cartoons, and honestly, the landscape of today isn't all that different from the landscape 5, 10, 20 years ago. Just admit it. We all liked fart jokes when we were kids. Stop trying to deprive kids of their light-hearted comedies. And there are also those of you who see CalArts as a reflection of progressive ideals, politics, and brainwashing. And if this is you, shut the fuck up, homie. You are halfway through your midlife crisis. Do you really think that, that Thundercats Roar or Teen Titans Go was for you? Sorry. Do not be mad at these shows for, doing so for not doing something they aren't trying to do. I do not bite into a burger and expect to taste steak. I'm not saying that, you know, this is a lower quality product. I'm saying it's just different. If I'm eating macaroni, I'm not going to be upset that I'm not getting enough protein. These shows are successful. Like, they're not doing poorly. These are shows that are making money. They're selling product. Kids eyes are, they're, kids are watching them. And I don't want to equate commercial success to quality. I mean, look at insert media that you don't like but still made a lot of money i don't know transformers but you can't ignore the fact that people are liking it i like it call me biased i am biased i love these cartoons these are good shows some of these shows kind of got me through some of the harder times in my life so part of me does want to just immediately jump on the defensive when people hate on the Cal art style as a whole because I love these shows. I love the style. And when we move on to another style, if I don't like it, I will live and so will you. And that's pretty much all she wrote. 
It's the end of the journey. It's the end of the saga. We're out to lunch. We're not coming back. <laughs> uh, uh, I hope you got something out of this discussion. <laughs> if you can call it that. Uh, this video was a lot of fun to put together, of course. Even if it wasn't a collab, I could complain about this shit for ages. It's in my blood. Of course, I had to save it as the last topic of the year. Because that's just how I roll. Anyway, I hope you have a good time. Happy holidays. Happy New Year. Have a Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Kwanzaa. Happy Boxing Day. You know, I think it'll be a bit late to the first few days of Chinese New Year, but uh, we'll run the curve on that, I promise. All right, I am going back to hibernate for two months. I'm out of this shit. I'm, I'm not coming back. <laughs> I'm taking lunch, and I'm coming back for breakfast. That's it. That's all you'll see of me left for this year. For two months, I'm gonna go work on some potent shit. Something like this. Not entirely. And when I come back, I promise I will deliver unto you something else. Pretty hot. Not as hot, though. Pretty hot. And if it doesn't catch your interest, which I suspect it won't, don't worry. There's plenty of other shit coming down the pipeline. Alright? Just appreciate what you have. And please... Pick up a book.